What we are trying to do is to ensure that the cycles of panic and neglect get broken with uh, the COVID-19 uh, uh, response. On today's episode of Expert Answers, we're talking about the coronavirus, or what specialists call COVID-19. Over the past few weeks, the virus has spread to more than 60 countries and territories, infecting tens of thousands of people and leaving 3,000 people dead. Now this week, as fears have grown about how the outbreak could affect global growth, the World Bank Group announced a massive support package valued at up to $12 billion to assist countries who are responding to or preparing to respond to the outbreak. To hear more about the human cost and the healthcare systems, that are under tremendous pressure, especially in developing countries. I spoke to the World Bank Group's Global Director for Health, Nutrition and Population, Dr. Mohamed Pate. Mohamed, let's jump right into it. The bank announced this package valued at up to 12 billion. How can that money be spent effectively? So this outbreak as it's unfolding, it's moved from where it was primarily in China to countries that are less strong in terms of their health systems, are more vulnerable to an outbreak such as COVID-19. And the bank support is really geared to help those countries be able to better detect the virus when it hits their shores, do the case finding, diagnose it, but also equip the frontline health workers both with knowledge but also with the tools to be able to respond adequately. That will be key to containing this outbreak before it also then gets uh, established within their populations. Spreads further within the populations. Geographically speaking, where are you most concerned? Where is the greatest need for support and help both now but also as this outbreak develops and changes over the coming weeks and months? Uh, there are parts of the world, the virus is all over the world and yet there are some geographies where it's not really um, established yet, uh, established yet yeah. because they haven't been able to di diagnose it or the virus may not have reached them yet. So those are the areas where they, we need to support them to prepare mm -hmm. before the virus hits them or if the virus is there for them to detect so where it is. So they can be kind is. of best defended against it. Exactly. Yeah. And then be able to uh, target interventions so that they can be able to uh, respond adequately. And on that, the kind of uh, map of it right now, obviously China has been hit hard by it, but it's also in a bunch of high income countries if and when it spreads to low and middle income countries, what are the sort of unique vulnerabilities of these countries compared to maybe what we've seen so far? So this virus, what it's showing us is that even high income countries are not uh, really uh, as prepared as they should be, as we've seen in some of the countries uh, in Europe, but other, other places as well. But the poorest countries are likely to be more vulnerable uh, to it in terms of their preparedness, but also the capability of their health systems to deal with the consequences of it. Because not every country is able to stand up a response like China did right. in terms of even its healthcare system. And, and if I'm not mistaken, you were a health minister in Nigeria before, is that yes. correct? Yes. What are those countries doing now? What do they need to be doing now to prepare before this virus arrives on their doorstep? So in Africa in particular, after the 2014 outbreak, several things have happened. In the case of Nigeria, we invested quite a bit in terms of the public health system, but also the management structure. So we developed an emergency operations center, which helped when Ebola came to being. But several institutions have come to be in the Africa Centers for Disease Control and many national public health institutions have been developed and the World Bank is supporting them. And that is going to make an important difference when uh, African countries are responding to this. Let's talk a little bit about that support. Let's get into the details. So I think something that gets maybe a little bit lost beneath the headlines a lot of people see the money, they see the figure, it's a big number, but the World Bank is also providing technical assistance um, and technical support. What exactly is meant by that? And, and I know you're a doctor as well. What would that mean to the doctors and the healthcare workers who are on the front line of this, this crisis? So the financing that the bank provides will enable countries to stand up their response plans in itself, but train their health workers. That requires ability to adapt whatever WHO has within their country context, but train the health workers to be able to get out there uh, to protect themselves, but also take care of those, those patients. One of the other things I was reading about is uh, working to help maintain trust within communities. 
I understand that has to do with like making sure healthcare workers are safe, uh, making sure communities uh, understand what's going on. Can, can you explain that a little bit? What exactly? Am I understanding that correctly? Yes, I, I think uh, this, the role of trust is even more important in crisis situation like this. As we have seen in DRC or in West African Ebola outbreak or even in China, where the trust environment is low, people then may not follow uh, the best guidance, uh, the most rational thing for them to do. So engaging communities and citizens to understand what is at stake and to follow the instructions that have been given to them. And to know that these instructions are, are in their best interest, I guess. Yes, and yeah. to do that transparently because sometimes lack of information fuels the distrust mm -hmm. because then people start guessing what is really going on. But if there's full transparency, then people will believe what they're hearing and be able to use that and uh, in the actions that they take. So, so they rumors don't hide aren't cases. flying and exactly. that sort of thing. Can you tell me also what the bank is doing to help the poorest patients? So those that are either super remote or maybe are afraid they're not going to be able to afford care uh, during this outbreak. Mm -hmm. What we hope to see in the days ahead is countries come up and utilize these resources uh, to respond, not, for, not only for the, uh, for the uh, overall population, but taking cognizance of those who can easily be left behind, right. the displaced populations. So you talked a little bit earlier about the need to build resilience. Uh, beyond the $12 billion package that was announced this week, what has the bank been doing to help countries prepare for this and other big outbreaks over the past few years? So the World Bank's effort to do this has, did not start with COVID-19. Right. It goes, uh, I say, several years uh, before now. Uh, if you go back from SARS uh, to the uh, pandemic flu, to the MERS period, but also the Ebola, there is a track record of uh, experience in the World Bank in terms of dealing uh, with, with this. Preparedness is a core part of it, and what we are trying to do is to ensure that the cycles of panic and neglect get broken with uh, the COVID-19 uh, uh, response. Panic and, and neglect meaning panicking about this outbreak and then kind of neglecting afterwards? Which is the pattern that has yeah. occurred in the past, where when the media shifts its attention, then everyone goes back to their normalcy. The experts, the funding kind of What goes we away. hope is that investing in core public health becomes central to the work of development and the work that the bank does because the implication is not only in health but also has a huge implication on economies and societies. Dr. Mohamed Pate, thank you so much for thank your you. time. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Expert Answers. The World Bank Group is continuing to monitor the outbreak of COVID-19. If you want to learn more about our work, head on over to worldbank.org. Until next time, goodbye. Thank you.